Gnossians are probably the most emblematic of Eric Satie's style and musical expression. They're similar to the Gymnopides in that they are a kind of proto-minimalistic music before the proper minimalism was invented in the 20th century. There's a very predictable pattern at the basis of all these pieces. It's bass and chords, very regular, and then on the surface it's all the time finding new and intriguing spaces to explore within this landscape. The Gymnopides explores more in the major mode and the Gnossians more in the minor. And the word Gnossian, Eric Satie invented this word from some Greek word that he did with a lot of different pieces. And there seems to be two competing theories about what is the basis for this word. It's either Gnostic, as in Gnostic philosophy and cults that Satie maybe was a little bit interested in at the time. Or it's from Gnosos or Knossos, which is a location on Crete in Greece, and it has links to the myth of Theseus and Ariadne and the Minotaur. And this was also discovered around this time in the end of the 19th century, and it later followed a big archaeological excavation of this. And it's still, I think, one of the best preserved places from that time in history. So it's probably kind of news at the time when Satie wrote this, that it was being discovered. And maybe it has something to do with the way people were living at the time. But it's hard to say exactly how any of these two would apply to the music. So let's just look at the music itself instead. Let's start with the obvious. There are no bar lines. This is typical Satie thinking outside the box. He want to create this free floating music. But actually the meter is very clear and regular in four or in two. We have this pattern with the left hand. So you can feel one, two, three, four, one. And it goes like this for the whole piece, extremely regular. So if you would put bar lines between every four notes, it wouldn't change anything. In my opinion, it would just be easier to play. But anyways, the idea is free floating music. Now, the interesting thing with this harmony, there's an interval here, which is the basis for a scale. It's called the Sati scale, which is what creates this weird and exotic character and mood. So we're in F minor and the normal F minor scale is this. It's a natural minor or Aeolian minor. Now, if we take the fourth degree, the B flat, and raise it to a sharp fourth, this is the interval, the sharp fourth, that creates the Sati scale. So, the B natural. This is the one. So it's a dissonant towards F minor, the tritone, but it's within the minor scale. And now there are four kinds of minor scales, uh, independent of this raised fourth. When we get to the top notes of the scale. So this is the national minor and we, here we use the D flat and E flat. But we can also use the natural D and natural E. Uh, so we have four versions here. The natural minor is with the flat. We have the melodic minor or the ascending melodic minor if we use the natural, major 6th and major 7th in the scale. Now this is independent of the sharp 4th that we add later. So this is kind of borrowed from the major scale, F major, but with a minor. And then we have the mixed versions. If we use the minor 6th but major 7th, we get the harmonic minor. That's the harmonic. Uh, we have the leading note. And the, uh, the final version is the Dorian minor if we have the uh, major six but minor seven. So it's kind of halfway to E flat major. Uh, it's only three flats. The key signature of E flat major if we start on the second scale degree of E flat, the F. That's the Dorian minor. And the thing with these four versions is that Satie uses all of them. 
but he combines them with a sharp fourth. So we get these super nice subtle variations in the tonal material. So in the beginning, we have this one. It's E flat and D natural, that's a Dorian minor. And now the sharp fourth. But here it's E natural. This is more kind of a hinting of the melodic minor. It's more tonal, this E natural, in a way. Now. So here we get finally a second chord in the harmony. It's a C minor. So that's the dominant minor. This is more in the mode of the natural minor because we have the E flat bass. Uh, it's a chord that feels like we're in the natural minor mode. And back to minor. The dynamic contrast forte. And now I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. We'll look at all the material later but when we get to the eighth notes in the right hand, the questioning, uh, this one. Here he really uh, emphasizes the fourth augmented fourth on the top. Uh, really put it out there. So here we, we can see D natural and E natural. This is the melodic, straight up. It's a different nuance than in the beginning. But now on the way down. This is D flat now. So now we're in the harmonic minor. And uh, that's the most uh, pressing scale in a way. And actually, I'm just gonna mention another piece uh, in the piano repertoire, the Liszt B minor sonata. It starts with a scale in the low register that acts as a very important motif for the whole sonata. It comes back in the middle and in the end. So we start. just playing it fast. Uh, we're in G minor, but now the second scale is actually this harmonic minor sati scale. So, so that's your weird vibes in that piece as well. Okay, and back to the Gnosian. Now let's look at the form of the piece. So we only have three parts. They're short and they're very similar, so I wouldn't call them proper sections, but they're kind of three ideas uh, that takes over. And we've seen the first in F minor, and after it ends, the second part we go to B flat minor. Back to F minor. This is a very nice contrasting part with a lot of energy in forte and it feels like it's a dancing this one with the melody going like this almost like a waltz but it's in four so it's not a waltz and then the third part is this back to the uh, reflective contemplative questioning what is real in this world what is not. Yeah, so these are the three parts that's the only material that's used in the piece. And then the form is whenever we have one part it's repeated to two times and the B part is shorter so that goes by faster. So the final form is this. We have A, B, C, B and then back to A as a variation, finally a little bit of difference and then B, C, B and they're repeated. So let's look at the A variation. It starts exactly the same. But it's like we can't remember how the theme goes so we just stop and try again. It was something like this. I don't remember the rest. <laughs> and again. It's 
so typical minimalistic mm. music that we only get a little bit of material and then the variation is just less of that material and not more. Okay, and finally we have these peculiar French markings in the score that's ironic, weird satie. Some of them are hard to make out what it means musically, but some are more clear. The first one, Très Louisant, very shiny. So I have translations in my score here, uh, but still some of them are hard. Uh, yeah, so shiny, I know how to play shiny. I think with a lot of tone and timbre maybe. Then the questioning, questionnaire, that's, uh, that's straightforward. Uh, the next one, when we get the echo, the shadow of the first part, de beau de la pensée. In my translation, it says, uh, with the tip of your thought. And I'm thinking that they mean like, you say it's on the tip of the tongue, but the tip of the thought, like you can't think of it. And that would make sense. But if there's any French uh, viewers, you can correct me in the comments. And then we have postulé en vous-même, postulate within yourself. So this might be an interesting interpretative clue that the first time it should be very uncertain and questioning. But then the second time, if the first time was a question, now the second time this is the answer instead. So you should play it more confident. Maybe. And then pa a pa, step by step, this one I really don't know. It's like one scale step at a time. <laughs> uh, okay. And finally, sur la langue, on the tongue, is it the same thing like you're supposed to, you're just about to say something? I'm not really sure what to make of this. This is just the final run of the B part that's ending the piece. And now to finish this video, I'm gonna look at the beginning of the third Gnosian because guess what? He uses the same scale in this one as well. Now we're in A minor. It's the same accompaniment pattern, but we go like this. So A minor, D sharp is the augmented fourth. F sharp, this is the, would be the Dorian minor version of this. So that's the same idea. And also then we go to E minor. And these two chords, somehow the E minor feels like a resolution, but it's not clear whether it's A minor that's the tonic and E minor is the dominant minor, or if E minor is the tonic and then A minor is the subdominant minor because it would be the key of E minor with the F sharp that we already have but the key signature is no sharps or flats it would be A minor and it's just a very clever way of uh, keeping it unclear the music and it's exactly the same thing he uses in the first gymnopedy as well but there it's in major with he uses the major seventh chord the um, G major 7 and D major 7 and it's really not clear which one is the tonic because it feels like they're resolving both ways it's the same in this one but in minor Thanks for watching Sonata Secrets the Patreon shout out goes to S. Benderli and the Performance Art Workshop